Friday. I don't know what the date is, July 23rd maybe. I think that's wrong. Anyway, we're pretty excited to get to Desolation Sound. It's about uh, four o'clock in the afternoon and after a long week of solar panel installation and um, outboard engine crane installation, we're pretty excited to get going. Yeah, our first trip outside of Howe Sound. That's right. So tonight we're just going to head to uh, Beer Island and head, head to stay there for the night and then we'll carry on and keep everyone updated on our adventures as we go. Beautiful day, it's not too windy, uh, so we should get into Port Grey's probably somewhere around, I don't know, 7.30, 8 o'clock maybe. We're motoring, we probably have another couple of hours to go I think, but we're doing about what, five knots. We've got the current against us right now and probably about a 10 knot headwind. So normally we'd be probably doing about six, six and a half at this power setting, but with the current and the wind, it's a little bit slower. It's a really nice evening. Just gather. We spent two nights at the Port Graves Anchorage on Gambier Island. We used the time to troubleshoot our new solar panel and enjoyed the beautiful weather. We left the Anchorage Sunday morning with a nice 15 knot breeze and ducked just south of Keats Island and north of the Paisley Islands. The wind subsided as we turned north to begin our trip up the coast. There were Sunday races in Gibsons with the backdrop of the stunning mountains along the Sea to Sky Highway. So I think this is the first time we've been on our boat where we can't see past a horizon. That's kind of cool. We're just off the coast of um, Seashelt on the Sunshine Coast heading north towards uh, Welcome Passage and ultimately um, Desolation Sound. We're currently motor sailing right now because uh, there's only about four knots of wind. But it is in a good direction, so it is helping us a little bit. I think we're making about six and a half knots. The Mary Island Lighthouse, built in 1903, marks the entrance to Welcome Pass. Will Franklin was appointed its first keeper. He and his wife Marianne earned a salary of just $360 per year. They turned it into a homestead, raising sheep, turkeys, chickens, and ducks. After making our way through Welcome Pass with Thorman B Island to the west, we turned east into the narrow entrance of Smuggler Cove, a cozy little marine park where we would experience our first stern tie. Entering this anchorage at low tide is a good idea due to the rocks in the entrance but it does make grabbing the stern tie chains a little tricky. We just did our first stern tie at, uh, where are we, Squirrel Cove? Is that what it's called? Squirrel Cove? Squirrel Cove. Squirrel Cove. I'm still recovering from the adrenaline rush. My memories are not. Uh, yeah, there's our stern tie. It was, uh, we actually had a little bit of an audience here. We had these rocks where like, there must've been 15 to 20 people just kind of perched up there watching. It's quite a spectacle. A couple great guys helped me out on that side. Yeah, we had we had line tangled up, and I got out there and I couldn't. Yeah, reach could, the Catherine chain. Catherine couldn't reach the chain because it's quite high up and it's kind of on a bit of a ledge. So these two guys came over and helped out. 
Meanwhile, I'm drifting around in here because it's a, not really windy, but there's a bit of wind and it's super tight. It was an adventure. But we have wounds. <laughs> oh, and Catherine has wounds. You have rock wounds? Smuggler Cove is an all-weather anchorage with three large anchoring basins for cruising boats. The best entry to the park by boat is through Welcome Passage at low tide when reef and rock projections are visible. The local area has provided many eye bolts located along the shoreline to accommodate stern ties. We decided to spend three nights in this cozy little anchorage where Catherine and I met up with a colleague of mine for a short hike and some sightseeing. So at low tide, you can totally see how exposed this rock is, and in high tide, it's completely covered. It's gonna take... That's a big tide. So we're still here in um, Smuggler's Cove. We've had a really nice couple of days. Uh, last night was a little tricky though because strong wind out in the strait, not, oh, not crazy strong, but about 20 knots. So it blew us around a little bit and we actually dragged anchor. So this morning we woke up to quite close to the uh, shore, maybe about, I don't know, 15 feet. So we're in a completely different position. Actually, didn't sleep much at all. I was up uh, most of the night keeping an eye on things. And then at about quarter to five, we noticed that we had uh, come quite close. So we've been just monitoring it. Yeah, now we're just getting ready to, to head out. lunch or dinner out. That's right. Our next leg was short with a quick motor north into popular Pender Harbour. After a stop at the fuel dock to fill the tank, we made our way east into Garden Bay which was to be our anchorage for the evening. We are in Garden Bay Marine Park which is part of Pender Harbour. Madeira Park over there. That's the rest of the uh, 
harbor here. The anchorage is on the east side. And there's a little park on the east side here as well with the dinghy dock. We were gonna do a stern tie uh, as suggested in the cruising guide, but uh, some people recommended that we don't need to bother. It's not that busy and we've got room to swing. So we took their advice. So here are the solar panels. And uh, we've just been moving the boom over back and forth to get rid of the shadow and they've been working pretty well. So after our little adventure last night, pretty much being up all night and having some problems with our anchor dragging at uh, Smuggler's Cove, um, we stopped to fuel here in Pender Harbor. And uh, before we left Squamish, I checked the fuel and it indicated 100%. Uh, I had put in about five gallons. Thought we had all kinds of fuel. Turns out we just put 30 gallons of fuel into our 35 gallon tank. So we only had five gallons left and our fuel uh, indicator was showing about 68, 69% full. So clearly it was a mistake to uh, depend on that uh, fuel monitor or the fuel gauge. So lesson learned and what we're gonna do is um, monitor the hours that we run the engine and the next time we fill, we'll try to determine an hourly consumption rate so that we can more accurately try to keep tabs. So just another little bit of learning on this awesome trip. And it has been awesome. We're having a really good time. Hmm. A shower with a view. first end and drop with our new crane. Oh my gosh, it was so easy. I wish stern tying would be this easy. <laughs> it was our 25th wedding anniversary, so we decided to go into Madeira Park for a dinner out. Unfortunately, there were no open restaurants, so a quick trip to pick up some groceries was our plan B. In our next episode, we'll continue our trip north to Lund and to Desolation Sound. We hope you enjoyed the episode. We certainly enjoyed putting it together for you. We would really appreciate a like and subscribe as it helps us to grow our channel. Thanks for watching.